everything around us is code. See this clicker? It is also a product of coding. Everything in this room, other than the people sitting next to you, was created by someone punching in zeros and ones into a computer. Think about some of the most successful people you know. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos. What do they all have in common? They built something using code. Though they are super successful now, they all started in obscurity. While code may be invisible to us, it has the power to create and shape our world. But now, it's no longer just for techies. In today's rapidly changing landscape, coding skills are becoming increasingly valuable and are opening up new opportunities for personal and professional growth for everyone. Code may be essential to our future, but its roots go back farther than we realize. The first computer was called the ENIAC and was created in the mid 20th century. It was a massive machine, taking up entire rooms and requiring teams of engineers to operate. With the first computer came the first programming language, assembly. This was nothing like the languages we see today. It was very tedious to use, even for the most experienced engineers. It was like speaking a completely different language made up of just zeros and ones. Despite its limitations, assembly was critical in the evolution of computer programming. It served as a stepping stone for many of the advanced programming languages we see today. It was almost like Latin, tough to speak, yet the foundation of future languages. Since then, programming languages have evolved greatly and continue to do so. Instead of giving you a bunch of names and dates, let's explore that evolution through a simple activity, printing the phrase, hello world. This is pretty much the first thing all programmers write when coding. First, as I mentioned, there's assembly. Complicated, yet revolutionary. A total of 18 lines. All this to print hello world. Next, there's a language called Coke. It was created in 1989 and helps make sure things like airplanes and medical equipment are safe and effective. Getting better, only 11 lines, still saying hello world. Moving on to C, one of the most widely used languages today and the first language many of you might have learned in coding classes. Okay, it's getting shorter. Lastly, let's move on to Python, the most popular programming language that fuels almost everything we see in tech today. Yep, that's it, just one line. So evidently, the way we program has drastically simplified. But even though today we can print hello world almost instantly, what we do now is still a fraction of what we'll be able to do in the future. And many of you see that promise of tech, especially if you're considering applying as a computer science major in college. A Stanford study showed that the number of computer science students doubled from 2007 to 2014. And since then, the number of computer science enrollments has only increased. All that said, there's no guarantee that we humans will be programming in the future or even texting our own parents unassisted. Speaking of text, here's one I sent to my mom and dad the other day. Now you would think I'm a Shakespeare junkie, but I got a little help from a friend. Chat GPT. Well, it actually wrote the whole thing for me. You might know my friend too. I'm sure you've heard of ChatGPT, a chatbot that can pretty much do anything. ChatGPT is a large language model that has been trained on a vast amount of data, allowing it to respond to natural language prompts. In just a few months, ChatGPT has already surpassed 100 million users. As AI continues to advance, it's becoming more and more apparent that ChatGPT and other generative AI tools are just the tip of the iceberg. Let's take a look at the amount of data ChatGPT, aka GPT 3.5, was trained on. Roughly 175 billion parameters of data. That's a lot. But its successor, GPT 4, was trained on over 1 trillion parameters. With this enormous amount of data, GPT-4 not only outperforms 90% of people taking the bar exam, but can also sue people on lawyers' behalf. This, of course, brings up the age-old question of AI ethics, and such debates will continue around topics such as AI bias, privacy, security, and more. But the impact is not limited to technology. It really is all-pervasive. Let's explore the world of art. Beautiful painting, right? What if I told you that you're talented enough to create this? This painting won first place in the Colorado State Fair last August. 
the catch, it was created by AI. This, like all things AI, sparked discussion and set off fierce backlash. After all, the winning artist simply typed in a few words and beat many talented artists that probably spent months perfecting their submissions. But AI-generated art isn't just winning competitions, it's impacting careers. The other day, I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts from the Wall Street Journal. It talked about how a Polish artist is getting his art stolen by AI. Many people, 92,000 to be precise, decided, why pay? They could instead generate his art using Midjourney, another generative AI tool. So maybe you can go home tonight and be the next Picasso by just typing in some text. Moving from the world of art, let's tie things back to code. So how exactly does code relate to AI? Well, at the heart of AI lies code. And just like Lego pieces that can be put together to create something bigger and more complex, code is the building block that can be used to create innovative technology. And just as you can use different types of Lego pieces to create different structures, there are many different coding languages that can be used to create different types of technology. I used to love creating airplanes and Ninjago figures with my Legos, but just a Lego piece by itself didn't do much for me. Similarly, code by itself doesn't do much. It's only when you put the pieces together that it becomes useful. And that's where artificial intelligence comes in. AI is like the grooves on the Lego pieces that connect code and create the extraordinary. AI drives innovation, solves problems, and as we just saw, even creates art. So we all get the importance of code in any shape or form. But for many people, the prospect of learning to code can be daunting. That's why I created a completely free way for anyone to learn how to code. Our platform offers a range of interactive courses and projects. It's designed to help beginners gain the skills they need to pursue a career in tech or simply explore their interest in programming. Who knows, you may discover a passion for programming and be on your way to creating the next billion dollar app. So, to conclude, the next time you're using a clicker or even a pen, remember that it was the doing of those visionaries who punched in the zeros and ones into a computer more than half a century ago. Unknown to them, they radically changed our world. But we see it, the simple power of those zeros and ones, the power of code. Thank you.